I'm Simon and I run the label Bella Union Records and the label has been going for 25 years now and I have been hoping to sign this gentleman next to me for probably about six of those 25 years but very very pleased to say that in the last year um, C. Duncan has signed to Bella Union and, and he's here with me now to talk about his new record Alluvium. Hello, welcome. Hello, thank you very much. So, Chris, I wanted to start off, well, maybe start off um, with a little bit of history. Um, this is your fourth album, yep. uh, your first for Bell Union, but I'm interested to think uh, about what happened before you started making records, because you were 25, I think, when, when your first album, Architect, came out in 2015. Yep. So what, what were you doing before that? So before that, I... I studied music uh, at conservatory. I went and studied contemporary classical composition. Um, tried to do a bit of that, but there's not a huge amount of, uh, <laughs> of work going in that. Um, it's just a very difficult thing to get into, but I really loved the course and I really wanted to learn how to write music. Uh, and then in that gap between graduating and recording my first record, I was working in cafes. I worked in the post office and all that time I was just writing and recording and trying to get all sorts of songs together, uh, until finally I had enough for my first record. So when Architect, when you finally signed a record deal with, with Fat Cat and probably a year or so before the record came out, were all the songs that were on Architect, were they already written? Had you written these in the, your sort of teenage years r running right through as a lot of first, a lot, a lot of debut records are like that? Not really. I've, a lot of them came just before I signed and then after. There was about a year between signing and finishing the record. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of other songs out there which uh, came from before that, and quite a few from Architect that didn't make it onto it. There's a lot of... When you say they're out there, do you mean actually out there? Or? It, not, no. No. <laughs> <So> <laughs> no, not out there yet. They're not out there yet, and some will hopefully never be put out there. Um, so there's a, there a lot of kind of extra material for the record, uh, but I had written a fair chunk of it, but it was kind of within a couple of years, you know, before the release of it, that those songs were from. So what I also found interesting about you, you, your recording career is that, and I suppose it's becoming more and more common with, with artists because of finances and, and whatnot, is, is that you've recorded three of your albums at home. Now, I guess well, the first album, Architect, was, was, was that in a, recorded in a flat in Glasgow? It was, yeah. Yeah. And, and t tell me how that happened. How, how was that? So, when I was about 13 or 14, my brother got recording software, uh, thinking that he would need it for his music exams or whatever at school. I uh, never used any of it, so I very quickly kind of stole it and took it to my bedroom uh, and started recording and just got really into kind of the technical side of making things, you know, at home and being be able to just make whatever you want um, and kind of reap the benefits of it, you know, as soon as it's finished, you don't have to wait for other people to play about with it. Um, so that was where my kind of interest in home recording came from. Uh, and then just as I went along and, you know, got signed to a, a label, I thought, well, I, I, I'm doing this from home. This is where I feel comfortable making music because I like working late into the night. I like to, you know, spend a lot of time getting all the layers. You know, my, my music's quite layered. And I think in a studio, it would take an awful lot of time to do that. Whereas at least at home, I can just, you know, hit stop. So it's the convenience as well as the cost. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, it was definitely the convenience to begin with. Um, and yeah, I recorded Arch Architect in, in my bedroom, in my flat in Glasgow. I had a flatmate at the time who was very noisy. Uh, so I'd always have to get his work schedule in, kind of work out when he was off working in a bar, uh, and then I'd record the album kind of in between that. One of the very first Mercury Prize nominations for recording in a flat in Glasgow? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> so, so. So second album comes along a year later, yeah. The Midnight Sun. Uh, again, same thing, is it? Is it you do it at home? Was it in Glasgow or had you moved by then? Uh, no, in Glasgow. Yeah, okay. so I just, as soon as the first record came out, in fact, before Architect came out, I'd started working on it and... So you were in that, in that sort of, like, uh, first blush of having got a deal excited yeah. about your music and uh, the, obviously the Mercury Prize nomination must have been a real 
boost. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it really just spurred me on to keep keep writing. Um, but I also I had quite a clear idea of what I wanted the second record to be before I started recording it. So that also speeds up the process because you're not kind of thinking halfway through a song, what am I doing here? Yeah. Um, whereas I just kind of stuck to my guns with that one, and I think that's why it happened quite quickly. Uh, they're, they're both beautiful records, and uh, I want to obviously we've got a lot to get through in not a very large amount of time. So I want to talk about the the next record, which is, is quite different in the sense that you made that decision to move out of the bedroom. Yeah. Uh, so we had been touring as a band with uh, Elbow. Uh, we did a UK tour with them, and then I went out to America and I supported them out there uh, and became really good friends with them and their keyboard player, Craig Potter, who is also their producer. Um, they've got a studio that they use in Salford, uh, which you know, they've recorded all their albums at. Uh, and I was thinking at the time, you know, what, what should I do for the next record and what should I do to make it a little bit different to the previous records? Uh, and I was chatting away with him and we just kind of decided it would be kind of cool to, to record it down there uh, at their studio. Um, so, I, so I demoed most of this, well, all the songs up in my bedroom in the flat in Glasgow. Uh, and then kind of took the whole lot down with me and we went through them and we got choirs, we got strings, we got... Guy Garvey. Yeah, Guy Garvey, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All sorts of different people involved uh, in kind of yeah, recreating parts of the, you know, the demos. And it was just, it was really exciting uh, and it was a huge learning experience for me because I'd never worked in a studio before. You yeah, know. so tell me a little bit about that. How, how so? I mean, I'm not saying you re- had to relinquish control, but I guess there is an element of that when you've been yeah. producing everything yourself, and then all of a sudden you've got someone else fiddling with the knobs, and yeah. there's a slight pressure as well, isn't there, with it being like on the clock? Yeah. Um, how did you find that? Yeah, I, when I was driving down to Manchester, I was really nervous. I like, really nervous. So the things I know. Or I knew Craig quite well by this point. I wasn't. I was nervous about working with new people. It was just the whole idea of someone taking music and saying, "Okay, let's do this completely differently," or "Let's try this out." And again, it's just something that I didn't know if I knew how to do, uh, or yeah, kind of give up that control. Um, but Craig, you know, we had so much in common musically that everything kind of came as very good suggestions from him. There wasn't anything kind of jarring that I didn't, you know, I didn't want. So you didn't get about at night thinking, oh gosh, if I had been able to say this. Because I know that is an experience for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah. Um, No, I I was very, very lucky. And uh, and we we did co-produce it together. There was, you know, the two of us were in the studio the whole time, just listening through parts of it and kind of deciding together. So it was a a kind of real team effort. and it, and it was great fun. Yeah. Well, it's, it's again, an absolutely stunning record. And I suppose it was around about then that we were talking maybe about doing something together in the future. Yeah. And we, we, we wrote a song together for the Lost Horizons album uh, in that little period. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, this last year, you've been putting uh, Alluvium together and, uh, and its release on Bella Union. So tell me a little bit about that, because obviously this is a back home record. You've now moved out of Glasgow, I take yes. it, yep. um, into a into a, a different part of a uh, different part of town, or so. Yes, I moved out of Glasgow to Helensboro, which is about half an hour, forty minutes away from Glasgow, just on the coast. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to a bit more space, a bit more peace. Yeah, absolutely, and it's next to the water, um, which I, it just seems to do something to you creatively. Mm, yes. um, and I just wanted to get back to recording from home again. You know, I loved working in the studio uh, down in, in Salford, but, you know, I, and I might do it again at some point, but I really wanted to get back to, you know, using all the things I'd learned from the studio as well um, to, to try out at home uh, and in a new place. Yeah, well, um, you know how much of a huge fan I am of, of your music and of this record in particular. And it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to me to hear maybe where some of these songs came from. It's such, to me, it's a very, very romantic record. Um, and I think to hear like how that sort of came, came about from your perspective would be, would be interesting to know. I think that's, yeah, yes, it is a very romantic record. Um, and I think that's just kind of come with confidence as I'm getting older. And yeah, I guess you just become more confident with 
writing about things that you know in a in a much more expressive way. First couple of records, there were you know lyrically, and well, Cocteau Twins was obviously a is a huge um, influence of mine, and I kind of and the way that things are clouded um, was something that I kind of hid behind a bit. Um, I'm not at all saying that Cocteau Twins did that at all, but I, no, I, I, I used it as a as a technique to think, well, you know, I don't really want people to know what I'm singing about, so I'll sort of, yeah, obscure it. Um, In and the then, layers of reverb and... Exactly, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can never quite make out what's uh, what's being sung. And that's fine, that's great as well, but um, with this record, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, just a confidence thing. Um, and I'm quite a romantic person, and I, you know, my musical tastes are wildly romantic. Tell me about those a little bit, because that fascinates me too. Because the record is is so eclectic. You know, you've got these almost sort of very sort of you know beautifully old fashioned songs like uh, the the two at the end, the wedding song, and um, and then you know you've got this sort of electronic side as well earlier in the record with with tracks like Air and. Yeah. Uh, what what are your influences growing up? As it when you're fifteen, so that's what two thousand and four. What are you listening to? I was listening to Opeth, Slayer, and the, <laughs> and, and, and the Carpenters. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I get so it. Very so very eclectic. Very eclectic. Um, and even actually, even Opeth, you know, they were um, when I was young, a lot younger, um, a big influence because they kind of slide from. You know, do metal seamlessly into this again very romantic kind of medieval madrigal kind of stuff, um, which I saw was amazing at the time. Um, well, maybe explain some of the vocal uh, choral side yeah. to your stuff. Yeah, I, I think so, and, and probably some of the intensity when things get bigger and louder. Uh, Opeth have this way of kind of sliding through amazing different harmonic patterns. Um, Except obviously. So can we expect a, a, a doom metal record at some point? <laughs> I, I don't think my voice is loud enough. Uh, or, yeah, I don't. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your parents because I found that fascinating. That they're, they're, Janina and Mark yep. are um, on pretty much all of your records, are they not? Uh, the last two. The last yep. two. Okay. Yep. So how did that come about? Oof. Not often you ask your parents to play on your on your records. No, no. Uh, I mean, I, as a kid growing up, you know, we used to occasionally all play together. Um, and they, so they're classically trained. They are. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, in, in what instruments? So my mum is a violist and dad's a violinist. Okay. Uh, and used to play with orchestras and then taught a lot. Um, and they still play with ensembles, but they re- retired from teaching a few years ago. And I think it was then I thought, oh, well, you know, they've got the time. That's it. I can use them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm so used to them playing, and you know, I've obviously having played with them before as well. Um, it just seemed like a great idea, and then enjoyed it so much that on most recent record they played on the wedding song as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm lucky enough to have seen you play at the Union Chapel with them in uh, as your backing band. Yeah. That was fantastic. Um, well, listen, if if if. If it wasn't enough that you produce your own stuff, you play on everything, you sing on everything, it's all done at home, you, which would be enough for most people, but you also direct and produce all your own videos and you do all the paintings for your artwork. So tell us a bit about that side, because I feel that it's, sort of, it's, it's not just about here are my songs, it's about here is this concept of this record and then you know, it, it, uh, these other things help me explain it. Is that is that about fair? Yeah, I think so. Um, if, yeah, for me, visuals are really important when it comes to when it comes to music. You know, I think they should go hand in hand. Um, and I paint. You know, that's, I, where did that come from? The painting. I was just always interested in painting as a kid. Um, my mum did a bit of painting as well, so her and I would sometimes set up canvases and just. Paint so you're not away. classic. You're not trained. At, you didn't go to art school. No, your artwork's no. just sublime. Oh, well, thank you. Um, no, I just is just something that I, whenever I'm not making music, I paint. Wow. Um, so that's, I suppose, my hobby. Although I can't really call music work, but you know, if I had to, you know, I think music is a is a hobby. Yeah, for um, a lot of us. Oh, absolutely. Because then it keeps you enjoying it. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's the same with with artwork. And artwork tends to be the thing that I do when I'm not recording. Um, so. And yeah, and for me, it's really important to visually represent your music if you can, or you know, have a lot to do with that. Because 
I've got friends who have had albums come out and you know they've gone in touch with a designer or something and a cover comes and that's fine and that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, whereas I quite like to then hark back to the front cover in kind of other singles that come out or or in this case in the, with Alluvium, uh, the videos. You know, I painted the videos as well and kind of animated them. Yeah, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, for those of you who are going to be discovering Alluvium over the coming months, please do look at the uh, the artwork on on the vinyl when it comes, yeah. and uh, on all the videos that you had painted, absolutely gorgeous stuff. So th thank you, Chris, for talking to me, but uh, before we finish, maybe just give me a little idea as to um, your next moves. So next things that I'll be doing, I'm getting some remixes made at the moment. Okay. Um, so we'll have some, hopefully some cool remixes from Alluvium, and I have started writing some new songs so Ooh. whether that comes out in EP form or in album form, we'll see. But um, I'm keen to just any change of direction or just more more beautiful stuff. Ooh, we'll wait and see. Okay, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> tantalizing. <laughs> Thanks very much, Chris. Is that enough? For you?